Hello everyone, my name is Jenna and welcome back. Today is our beautiful virtual coffee date where we do a little holistic discussions, mindful discussions, and we just kind of talk about what's going on. If you would like to grab a coffee, a tea, a water, whatever your beverage of choice is, today you all voted to discuss how to get out of a rut, how to essentially like unstuck yourself. I am going to talk about five different ways that I try to <laughs> pull myself out of a rut on a daily basis. I've talked pretty frequently about um, my issues with mental health on other platforms. I have PTSD, I have anxiety, I do deal with depression as well. Somebody that's very prone to getting stuck on top of being very comfortable as a hermit. So pulling myself out of these things daily is very important for me and my health and my family's health as well. We're gonna get into five ways that I unstuck myself and hopefully they are helpful to you. Before I dig deeper into that, I just wanna talk about what, what a rut really is. It is a repetitive pattern, um, an unhealthy repetitive pattern that begins to affect and take over your life. So my first tip in pulling yourself, myself, out of a rut is connection. And this is probably one of the more important ones for people that are so okay with being a hermit. And now as human beings, we are wired to connect with something. Connection is one of our survival traits. You, know, you have to have something, whether that be a person, an activity, an animal, anything, a hobby, you know, we need to connect with something to survive. So the connection I'm going to be talking about is connecting with other people. I am, I struggle with this very heavily, um, especially as I get older, I have a harder time with it once you've been burned too many times, so to speak. So it's harder for you to reach out when you've done that before, right? And it didn't work out. It's totally fine that it didn't work out, but it does make it more difficult to reach out in the future. I try very deeply to connect with very few people on purpose to create a deeper connection. Reaching out and sending a text message or actually following through with a plan to meet for coffee or to grab dinner or to just go for a walk or whatever. Having that connection be, you know, reciprocated is very, is very special because you do feel like there is an actual tie between you. So getting out of your comfort zone, I guess, is where connection kind of plays. You need to be able to force yourself outward because I, for some reason, think of like the show hoarders. <laughs> you know, th those people are alone. And what comforts them is things because they don't know how to connect outward. So it's very important to be able to reach out um, and ways to do that. You can go volunteer, try a new hobby, you know, put yourself out there and somebody will bite. You know, somebody will take that connection and or, or see that you are trying to connect and try not to go into these situations with a negative mindset which is something i have a very hard time doing i immediately think i'm going to fail at everything so it's very important to when you're trying something new to say i am just here and that's it so your first little tip is connection put yourself out there find something someone that you connect with human connection again we are wired for it. We need it to survive. The second tip that I try to implement daily is the concept of eating the rainbow. And I love that that's what this is called. And for those of you that don't know, it is trying to literally <laughs> place every single color of the rainbow in your diet throughout the day. Each color has a different health benefit. And I feel like a lot of people may not know that. And it's so, so, so important to try to, you know, really make your, your food, your meals as colorful as possible to get all these different nutrients and health benefits. So you're looking for 
fruits and vegetables and grains that are of a variety of color. You're looking for things that, you know, are organic. <laughs> you know, we try to eat real foods. That's what this is about. It's eating real foods. And if you're having a hard time associating different colors to things, you know, some of these things are strictly going to be fruits. I mean, I don't know any blue, anything blue that's a vegetable. Maybe there is one or, you know, I don't know. But you think blueberries, antioxidants, anti-inflammatory. Think orange, maybe carrot, eye health, or turmeric, anti-inflammatory. You know, they have all these different things. So what I do is I essentially, with every dinner that I make, it's kind of a kitchen sink dinner and I will add little bits of everything to try to spice it up and make it look colorful and when you eat the rainbow it's more appealing and you're putting more heart and more soul into your meal and this is how I pull myself to tie it into pulling yourself out of a rut is taking care of your body right eating real nutrient dense foods that have a variety of health benefits can help you feel better about yourself instead of maybe eating gas station food, eating fast food, drinking nothing but pop all day. You know, things like that, they wear you down. They make you feel sluggish. So it's so important to fuel your body with what it needs to thrive, to feel motivated. So eating the rainbow is something that I do on a daily basis to try and make my body feel good. When your body and your mind feel good, you feel more motivated to get things done or more motivated to go do something that you love, which brings me into our third topic. It's having a work and play balance, which I feel is something that is really hard. Having a work play balance is something you have to put an effort towards. If you have a job that is so heavy and so um, demanding of your life, you have to force yourself to have that play time, right? And then there's people that want nothing but playtime, but they suffer on the work side and that makes them suffer on the financial side and, and on a different aspect of their life as far as growth. They may be growing in a hobby, but not growing in the success that they want financially. So having that work-play balance is incredibly important to give you a purpose in your life, to make you feel like you are accomplishing something and it goes both ways. I will say from my experience, I am a yoga instructor. Um, before I was pregnant, I was teaching two to three classes a day on top of running this channel. And it became more work than um, something that I was in love with, something I was passionate about. I was overthinking it. I wasn't allowing myself to have fun. I wasn't doing my own personal practice. So even if you run your own business or you are your own boss or you're running your own whatever, you still have to create those boundaries because then that starts to trickle into your personal life. And again, you can start to become a little bit depressed about it. It can be really, really hard for you to realize that, you know, I need to slow down because now I don't know what I want to do with my life. And that creates those negative patterns and then you just don't do anything right and you suffer on both ends so having a work and play balance helps literally create balance in your life you can work really really hard and have a demanding job and still have equal parts of play and passion and love and actually enjoy your life you know we weren't born to work we we're born to just live so it's really important for you to keep that mindset of if I feel like I'm being worn down by my job, maybe I need to go take a walk or something, <laughs> you know, pull yourself out of that element and force yourself outward, which, you know, can go back to connection, putting yourself out there. Even if you're tired and you just want to sit on the couch, that's how you get pulled into a rut. You sit on the couch when you get home instead of going out and doing something, you know, reading a book, again, going on a walk pulling yourself out of where you've been all day. Work and play balance. So, so, so important and is so incredibly hard to achieve, but it is one that will help you appreciate both sides of the spectrum. Number four is going to be, my coffee's getting cold, is gonna be managing your social media. Now I think everybody that has social media abuses it because it is so easy to become numb, to just mindlessly scroll 
for hours, but you become so overstimulated and so overwhelmed with information and so overwhelmed with things that don't even matter. It's so hard to figure out what to do when you're not scrolling, right? You become bored so easily because we are in such a huge just state of numbness at all times. And you can do that even with this platform, <laughs> you know? Next thing you know, you're 10 episodes deep on binging with Babish and <laughs> your whole day's gone. Um, not that I regret those days, those are always good ones, but still, it's important for you to actually go and do something instead of just mindlessly scrolling. It creates horrible effects on your vision just staring at a screen all day, horrible effects on your brain of just staring at a screen all day. Also, you're just sitting the entire time probably on the couch or lying in bed, not sleeping when you're supposed to be asleep. You know, there are so many moments where um, scrolling on social media just is convenient. And at the end of the day, it's really, really not. It has horrible effects on things and can really um, put a kind of block in your relationships because you don't know how to communicate. Um, you're just scrolling in the presence of someone else instead of appreciating their presence. Managing your social media will help pull you out of a rut because it will force you to use your imagination to get creative and to go actually do something instead of just mindlessly taking in information that has no effect on your life. Managing your social media is putting yourself first. Social media time is putting yourself first instead of allowing other people to dictate your life and make you feel some kind of way about your life. Or do a detox, go 24 hours without social media and see what you get into. You might realize that it's very refreshing not having to go on there or just not going on there, period. Number five on pulling yourself out of a rut is to keep a clean space. I don't hold very many emotional ties to objects. There are a few things that um, I held on to for memories, but it's a very small amount of things. And I'm very thankful that my husband is the same way. He does not really hold many ties to tangible things, which makes our life a lot less stressful. We just moved into a new space. Before we moved into, before we sold the other house, we got rid of a ton of stuff. And then we moved into the apartment. And then when we moved out of the apartment, got rid of a ton of stuff. And then as soon as we moved into the house, we got rid of way more things. So we have no problem getting rid of stuff in order to create a space that you can breathe in. You know, create a space that doesn't stress you out because there's just stuff everywhere. And the fact that there isn't stuff everywhere means that there's a lot less chores to do. There's a lot less buildup of junk, you know. So be, being able to make it easier to keep a clean space makes it a lot less stressful to be home. You know, your home is supposed to be your sanctuary. It's where you're supposed to feel safe and comforted. And if you come home and you feel stressed because the place is an absolute disaster, that's on you at the end of the day. You know, you have to be able to let go of things. You have to be able to, to purge and be okay with that. You know, I love the thing, like, does this spark joy or whatever? Like, you know, does it really? Have you worn that, you know, in the last year and a half? No? Okay, well, yeah, it's cute, but get rid of it. You know, keeping a clean space, like, that's, like, my number one thing because I get so stressed. <laughs> and once things are dirty, it's so hard to be like, ugh, I want to, I need to clean that. No, you just keep piling the dishes in, right? And then eventually, a week later, you'll do all the dishes. And it's just a repetitive pattern instead of keeping it clean in the first place. Um, not everybody needs to be a minimalist. I don't believe that that needs to be like a, this strict, confined, like you have to do this. But getting rid of things feels good. It helps you be able to breathe and, and enjoy where you are. I have a baby that just woke up. I'll be right back. So as you can see with these discussions, a lot of them are my personal experiences and my as honest as I can be opinions. <laughs> but for me, when I need to pull myself out of a rut or when I feel myself getting into a rut, which is, is something that I feel and it is something that I have to truly push myself towards getting out of. So every day I try to make a connection. I try to eat the rainbow. 
I try to create this work-play balance, especially with having a newborn. It can feel even more overwhelming at times, but it's important for me to keep the priorities together and have that work-play balance. I try to manage my social media time and how much time I spend mindlessly scrolling while he takes a nap or at night when I'm just exhausted and I try my best to keep a clean space. Those five things are my little pillars of daily self-help in um, not feeling stuck. So I hope that those things helped you um, or they are something new to you or a different take on things that you already know. I didn't want to say, you know, do yoga, meditate, um, go outside, drink water, like those things you already know. Like you already know that those things are good for you. Exercise, of course, those things are already good for you. But there are reasons why, you know, I phrase eat the rainbow because there's a reason why eating good organic fruits and vegetables is good for you. There are actual benefits to doing that. And I don't know. That's just my, always just, just my opinion. But I hope that you all enjoyed this video and this little coffee date. Hey, baby. I hope you guys have a beautiful day. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye.